Hello and welcome to Scuttlebutt, a program for Navy's people and issues that matter to you. I'm Warrant Officer of the Navy, Mark Tandy. In this edition, we'll catch up with the Head of Navy Engineering, Rear Admiral Uzzle, to get an update on the implementations of the Rizzo Report recommendations. We'll also take a look at the arrival of a future asset for the RAN, see what our clearance divers have been up to in the Pacific, and we'll hear from the Chief of Navy, Vice Admiral Ray Griggs. But first, it's been almost six months since the Rizzo report was handed to the Chief of Navy, which was developed from an investigation on how to improve defence's accountability, procurement and sustainment practices. A plan to address significant problems in the repair, maintenance and sustainment of the Royal Australian Navy's amphibious fleet has been implemented and the Head of Naval Engineering has the latest. The Rizzo report was a response to the Chief of Navy's operational pause for the two amphibious ships, uh, Manura and Canimbla. In that report, based on its terms of reference, Mr Rizzo went through and tried to determine what the root causes of our uh, failures were. And we did fail. We, we failed in a number of areas. His main focus in the report is on our ability to manage the asset, which includes its maintenance and the engineering support that sits behind it. Accordingly, it's not just something that engineers have to worry about. It's about using the asset, it's about loving the asset because it's the only thing in most cases that's keeping us dry, warm and fed when we're at sea. So there are a number of recommendations that we had already started to take action on. There are some of Mr Rizzo's recommendations that we have essentially completed. All we need to do is dot a few I's and cross a few T's. There are some of his recommendations that we know will take us a number of years to get resolved until we can start to see the benefits of the work we have done to fix those problems. We have to get back into a mindset of thinking that these are assets that have to last for a long time. They are a huge investment by the Commonwealth. We have to maintain them and therefore we have to really care about them whilst we're using them. So the effort is still going on out there. There has been a lot of effort going in. Uh, some recent work in HMAS Tobruk has now got that ship into a condition that is, uh, you know, unbelievable. The, the difference has been quite stunning. However, that has not come without a lot of money and certainly a lot of effort. There are some people who have put in a lot of effort. HMA's success is in exactly the same situation. Huge amount of effort going into that ship as well. If someone was to ask me if we can achieve what Mr Rizzo wants us to achieve, the answer is yes. I have great faith in this organisation and its abilities to do what it knows it has to do. We can do it, and indeed we must do it. Ships are now having to live for 30 years. We have to be able to use them to the best of their abilities for that many years. The people we have have to be able to support that. So we've got to give them the support and the training and the money that they need to do that. So yes, I believe we can do it. It is something that we can do, and indeed it's something we must do. Our engineering staff has been putting in the long hours to ensure we can keep all of our assets going and I'm sure this will continue into next year. October was a busy month for our Navy clearance divers as they prepared to help out our Pacific partners, Papua New Guinea, disarming World War II ordnance with Operation Render Safe. In Papua New Guinea, Australia, New Zealand and PNG Defence Force members have helped improve safety for thousands of people living around Rabaul in East New Britain province. Operation Render Safe is the ADF's enduring mission to find, identify and dispose of unexploded ordnance from World War II in the South Pacific. In October and November, more than 150 personnel worked tirelessly to render safe munitions that had threatened villages and populated areas for almost 70 years. The effort included removal of ordnance from under buildings, in and around local villages, plantations, Japanese tunnels and underwater in the harbour. To make sure local villages were not damaged, most munitions were relocated to a safe demolition site before detonating with explosive charges. That scenario was repeated several times over the following weeks, with bombs as large as 1,000 pounds blown in place when it was impossible to recover them from the jungle near plantations and villages. 
At the beginning of the operation, HMNZS ships Resolution and Wellington joined HMA ships Diamantina and Gascoigne in Simpson Harbour to survey the waters, then investigate contacts of interest. Clearance divers on board Wellington, Diamantina and Gascoigne conducted diving operations and the MHCs launched remotely operated mine disposal vehicles to capture imagery before deciding whether to investigate further. This work led to a significant discovery of a previously uncharted wreck, later identified as a probable World War II Japanese submarine. Another task completed during Op Render Safe came at the request of the Kokoda Track Authority. That resulted in a side trip for some of the team who disposed of dangerous items near the track of Myola and Oa's Corner. The main task was to make safe a couple of bombs from an American B-25 Mitchell which were close to a village. The best way to deal with these very heavy bombs lying near populated areas was to explosively open a narrow slit, ignite the fill inside and allow it to steadily burn out. This low order method of rendering safe turned the bomb pretty much in a piece of metal while keeping it in fairly good condition so trekkers can still enjoy seeing these relics of war. The team also recovered grenade fuses which were disposed of in a controlled detonation. Then at Oa's corner, the very beginning of the Kokoda track, more hand grenades were dispatched. On the only non-working day of the three week operation, members of ship's companies volunteered their time to paint buildings in a local primary school. Operation Render Safe 2011 resulted in more than 2,000 items with a net explosive quantity in excess of seven tonnes being removed and disposed of from areas near the local East New Britain populations. Earlier this year, Navy said farewell to HMAS Manura after 17 years of service to the Australian Defence Force. Last month, we said goodbye to her sister ship with a decommissioning of HMAS Canimbla. Canimbla's proven excellence routinely made her our government's asset of choice for assignment to activities such as maritime security and disaster relief operations across the region and indeed further afield. I know all those who served in Canimbla and indeed in Canimbla's extended family will feel some sense of loss today, but we can and should rejoice in the long and faithful service she has provided to our country and the outstanding accomplishments of her crew. This is the Canimbla we must remember. For the men and women standing before us on the upper decks of Canimbla, and for many in the US today, is one with a such a touch of sadness as we remember those from Shark 02 and Black Hawk 221 who did not return with us from operations. We'll always remember them, along with the many friendships that developed over the years, through the challenges we have faced and the fun times that we shared. But importantly, never forget or be prouder to say we served in HMAS Canimbla. While we mark the end of an era in LPA, the future is exciting as we prepare for the next generation of amphibia ships in the knowledge that the men and women who have served have and will continue to shape the future. So, as a tribute to all who have had the wonderful opportunity to experience Canimbla, until the next ship bears her name, I say for one last time, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. And that brings us to the end of the last edition of Scuttlebutt for 2011. We will leave you with a closer look at our newest addition to the fleet, the soon to be commissioned HMAS Chules. Until next year, have yourself a safe and happy Christmas. 
I'm Warren Boss of the Navy, Mark Tandy. Stay safe.